It's actually working better now, believe it or not. I don't hear that clanking anymore. But, I mean, that's way too much force. Ooh, jeez, see, that's, that's not good. At this point, you guys already know what's up. I've got some new brake fluid and my new master and slave cylinder as well. We'll be racing both of these. This should be the same process on any E90 manual transmission car, perhaps on the M3s, but it should be pretty similar still. Starting off with the master cylinder, the first thing you want to do is remove this under trim panel below your steering wheel, kind of below the pedals over there. There are three T20 torque screws in these little slots. You have to kind of fit angle it out of the spot. Also unplug the various different things. We have this guy over here, had this plug over here. We had this little uh, sort of satellite or um, some sort of antenna, I think, for the SOS system. I can't quite remember. That one over here. And then we also had a connection for the light as well as the SOS speaker. Once it's removed, you can fully pull this guy out and put it aside. We will not be needing it for quite some time. We'll change the sleigh first because at the very bottom of the car and it'll let the fluid drain out, at least whatever access we have. It'll be less of a mess when we change the master in our footwell. To avoid a total, you know, just splash of fluid at the bottom, I recommend taking out a majority of the brake fluid in your reservoir. Uh, remember, one side is your clutch side, one side is your brake side. Um, but as long as it's not completely dry, we should be fine. But either way, we'll have less fluid loss and fluids on the lines, which is what we want. Also, a side note, most the 90s have a little piece over here, just like that. But over here, mine's already off of the car. Out of the car now, facing the rear, that's where my camera's pointed. If we go up to where the transmission, where it meets the engine, you can kind of see this clutch line over here. And just above it is the slave cylinder, which is very unfortunately placed. It's just such a weird location to get to. The two bolts connect to the bell housing. There's uh, one right over here, and there's one above it, which is very, very hard to get to. Kind of hard to see as well, but you kind of got to feel for it with a wrench. An open that wrench, I would say. Um, I've already partially removed this this nut over here. It's just very annoying to get to. What I may do is remove the lines first, or at least this one, to get some access. Um, both these lines are connected by just little metal clips. Connect the uh, whole line in place. You can pull them across. I would recommend having a small drain pan down here as uh, brake fluid will come out and it won't be fun because brake fluid is very toxic and it's very corrosive as well. It's just not good for you. So uh, wear gloves if you can. Of course, I am not right now, but I really should be, which I probably will put on some soon. I just need to get those nuts off. Um, the service manuals say to remove it from the bell housing first, but I really don't see how that's possible with all this stuff in the way. Maybe this nut can come off, but uh, the other one is very hard to get to without moving some stuff out of the way. A couple days later, I got the slave out, but let me just tell you guys, this was a huge pain. Um, the design of it is very strange in the sense that the top, the top um, bolt or top nut rather is very hard to get to. Um, it's kind of wedged between the transmission and the car itself, so it's very hard to get to that top bolt without some sort of special extension. But I got the work done, so hopefully it won't be that bad for you guys. So using a 100 count ratchet you can see over here, I bought this at Home Depot's little stubby 3 8 inch drive ratchet with a 3 8 inch extension, 6 inches, along with a wobble socket. It is a 13 millimeter. Uh, I got it in a pack with a bunch of other ones down there. Didn't need those, it was the only way I could get this wobble socket. This I think is the only way you're going to be able to get access to that top uh, nut of the slave cylinder. I tried a variety of extensions before with this kind of swivel joint as well and just wouldn't go, wouldn't budge at all whatsoever. I tried using quarter inch stuff, that wouldn't work at all. I even tried using my Milwaukee um, electric ratchet, that wouldn't work either. So if you guys have these tools laying around, this should work just fine. Um, it is a huge pain, like I said, so prepare yourself. Please try and have this or something similar because using something like this with these sort of twisty joints, even in the 3 8 inch size, they just wouldn't budge. So I do recommend getting this. Back to the slave cylinder itself. I cannot tell if it was broken before I took it out or if it broke as I took it out. Um, essentially, the plastic around the piston sort of was uh, already cracked, I think, then it sort of fell apart as I took it out of the transmission. So um, luckily, all the pieces fell out of the transmission, not into it, so that's okay. But um, I do think it wasn't broken like this before because if it was, this piston would have just come straight out. Um, so I don't think this was the actual issue I was having, um, but it could have been bad regardless. Clearly it was weak, so I'm not mad about replacing it, that's for sure. Now with the new slave cylinder, let's go ahead and remove the bleeder valve first, and then we can put it back uh, by hand. The bleeder valve on this slave was an 11 millimeter, so go ahead and remove that and put it back in by hand. We're gonna be using that later to bleed the clutch later on. Also extend out the uh, piston arm from the slave cylinder itself, it is compacted for shipping purposes. It was a smaller container, obviously, so 
I took the boot off just to show you guys, but uh, put the boot back on if you guys took it off and just pull this tip up and then it should pop out like so. Here's what it should look like. Don't forget to put the dust cap back on the bleeder valve. It's not really that important, but might as well put it back because you have a new one. Um, and now we're ready to reinstall this in the car. Before we do that, I have a new tool I want to use. This guy right here is called a boroscope. You can stick it into spark plug holes. You can stick it in transmission inspection ports or, uh, for example, the slave cylinder port. I'm going to put it in there and just check out what's going on. Make sure nothing serious or bad is happening, um, but I'll put in the inspection port just to give it a look. And this one connects to my phone by Wi-Fi, actually. I bought it on Amazon. It was like 30 bucks, I want to say. So if you guys do a lot of car work, recommend one of these for sure. Should be pretty useful for diagnosis and also just checking things out. And uh, yeah. Here we can see I read the transmission through the slave cylinder port. Uh, we are created with the shifter arm right there. And of course, you see the blue spec pressure plate right behind there, but it is kind of hard to see. Looking down here, you can see more of the pressure plate. Unfortunately, with this borescope, I couldn't quite tell what my exact issue was, and the borescope wouldn't have shown this issue no matter what it was. Um, unfortunately, my transmission had an issue where the clutch actually lost a spring. Um, well, I'm not really sure what the initial issue was, but, but the pilot bearing failed, which then caused the throttle bearing to fail, which then, in chain of events, next thing you know, your clutch is fried, the pressure plate was also fried, and so was the flywheel. Uh, that's what I found out later in the diagnosis process. I actually dropped the transmission after doing the slave and master cylinders. Um, in fact, my transmission video came out months ago. I just kind of forgot that did this video, uh, but here it is. But yeah, kind of a cool tool regardless to kind of see uh, areas you would normally get to see. So from the looks of it, my pressure plate's fine. It's not a broken tooth on that. I took a good look around the entire thing. I just showed you guys a small clip from that because it's kind of boring just looking at the pressure plate. Um, but uh, yeah, it looks pretty much fine to me, at least from as far as I could tell. I think we'll proceed with putting the new slave in, and then we're going to go move on to the master, and then bleed the system. The master's not going to be fun, because it is all in the footwell, and you're going to remove some clips and all, which is not the most fun thing in the world. Alright, my new slave cylinder is now installed, as you guys can see over there, put the line back on as well. Go ahead and torque the bolts down to 16 foot-pounds, now that's what the manual says, however, um, you really can't fit a torque wrench up here, so... I just kind of thinned up as well as I could, um, but not over tightening, obviously, just as tight as I could get that felt, you know, right. Um, but uh, yeah, then we connected the line, be sure to pull up on the metal clip, and then snap this line in all the way, press the metal clip down, and you should be all set, give it a good tug, just to make sure that it is properly connected. We'll be back here to bleed it later, but for now we're going to go back up the top and uh, start our master cylinder removal. Next up, at the very top of your clutch, you're going to see a clutch return spring. It is all the way up here. I've already disconnected it, but it connects to the pedal itself. Go ahead and remove this guy from the bottom, from the base of the pedal. The first thing you're going to want to do is remove these two 10mm bolts, which attach these 10mm nuts. They are located pretty much on the master cylinder itself. Very hard to look at from any camera angle, sort of, so I'm going to do my best. But um, let's see if I can even get in there. There's the master cylinder right there. There are two ears on top of it, very hard to see, uh, but those bolts go through there and then come through that little bracket you can see over there. Here's the new master, but these are two ears I'm talking about with the two little bolt holes. That's where those two uh, bolts and two nuts go through. I recommend using a quarter inch drive ratchet with a 10 millimeter wrench and 10 millimeter socket, of course, to get those off. On the uh, left side, I use the ratchet because it's kind of all you can fit there. And then on the right side, I would use your open-ended wrench um, of some sort to get those guys off. They were a bit stubborn for me for some reason, so just keep that in mind. Um, I, don't, I couldn't fit any power tools in there, so it'll have to do. Next, I'll remove this guy. Uh, this essentially holds the end of the master cylinder into the pedal. This guy sits in the master like so, through the actual pedal assembly. You kinda gotta feel for it, and then you can use some pliers to squish these two tabs together and push it out, and then you can free the master cylinder um, from both the bolts and that little plastic tab. All you can do now is remove the two hoses, which there are two. I'm going to start with the bottom one first. It's just one of those metal clips, the same as the slave cylinder. I pull up on it and then pull the hose out and then uh, should be more or less the same for this guy over here. I also pulled this spring out, which actually went right over here. There are two little plastic guys that kind of meet together. You can see these two pieces over here. If you basically pull up on the pedal enough and you get yourself enough space, the entire spring will come out. So that's what I did just to get it not spring loaded in my face like that. So now it's out of the way. Um, to put it back in, kind of the same as so you took it out, just pull the pedal all the way up, put the spring on this perch over here, 
Slowly bring it down, try and align it perfectly. You should be good to go. So now only the hose are holding our mass cylinder in place. So we gotta disconnect those. I'm gonna get some towels and just stuff them in here so we can get brake fluid everywhere because uh, that is known to happen. Luckily, because our slave just came out and we also emptied a lot of the reservoir, there should not be much fluid left in the lines, if at all. So we should be pretty good and pretty good standing to get um, that guy out that too much of a mess. Just got this sucker out of the car. Uh, please be aware that return line, or not the return line, the feeding line from the uh, uh, reservoir over here that goes all the way down to your master cylinder, that line was very, very hard to take off for whatever reason. Um, it was just very stiff, so I had to stick a small screwdriver up there kind of scuffed up the uh, cylinder, but no big deal because we we're replacing it. If you're curious about when both your master and your slave cylinders were made, you can take a look at these two little clock looking things over here. The one on the right will indicate the month it was made in, which looks like uh, September, it's pointing the nine for me. And then if you look at the other one, which is the uh, year, it's gonna be 07 to 2007. Old slave cylinder was actually October 2007, so both are 07 parts and both are very old. The install is gonna be the reverse of the uh, removal. Just take off these plastic caps and uh, put those suckers in. And we should be all set to bleed the system right after that. Clutch switch is on the new one, now time to install it. Got the master cylinder all back in. It is fully installed, all the lines connected. I just topped off the brake fluid reservoir with some new fluid. And now it's time to bleed the clutch, which I'm, I actually just started doing. I have the clutch to press, as you guys can see over there, and then down here. The bleed valve is open, got a hose connected to it, um, and then a tiny bit of fluid came out just by pumping the clutch once. Um, there's gonna be a ton of air in these lines, obviously, just because there is no fluid whatsoever in them, at least until now there wasn't, so. I'm gonna keep pumping the clutch a couple times, just get some more fluid through. And then we'll hook up my power bleeder to the system and then uh, put it around like 20 PSI, no less, or no more than that. And then we should be even better off uh, just by closing and opening the valve and then pressing the clutch a few times in between. Alrighty guys, the motive power bleeder hooked up it is now bleeding the system pretty well. You can see it's only at about 10 PSI, maybe 11. The fluid is still plenty of it in there. It's going through this line all the way to the reservoir. If you just bought one of these, you may notice that this line is leaked. So I put some plumber's tape in here, it doesn't leak anymore. I also got the upgraded versions, aluminum cap. This thing doesn't leak either. The other style does tend to leak. So be sure to get that one if you guys are buying one of these soon. Already got my bleed valve all closed up. It's time to press the clutch up and down very slowly just to see if it builds up pressure. What's up guys, Future Sam here. So uh, bleeding this clutch actually proved to be a very difficult uh, task. And if you go online and look it up, it is pretty common knowledge that bleeding the 335i clutch or any BMW clutch actually ends up being a huge pain. Um, so what I ended up doing was leaving this car to bleed actually while I was on, on my trip for about a week came back and the car was basically ready to go. Um, but it's probably kind of extreme. So what I would do is just let it bleed overnight by gravity, at least a couple days, uh, one night minimum, and you should be fine after that. I think we still got some air in the system. So time to begin the bleeding once again. Just going to do the same thing basically. Apply some pressure with the bleeder, open the valve, and it should be good to go. Once you let the car gravity bleed for quite some time, I do recommend just following the same procedure I mentioned at the end of the video, um, which was, you know, the process of depressing the clutch and opening the bleeder. Keep doing that for a while until your pedal firms up. Well guys, that wraps up this video and hopefully this helped you out and you don't need to drop your transmission like I did. As you can see in this video, my clutch was just fried, uh, the spring was missing and just a bunch of other random stuff was wrong. But it's okay because it's all good now, this is about a year ago now. Please leave a like and consider subscribing for more content like this, N54 stuff, E92 stuff, BMW stuff in general, and even Mercedes stuff, which I also do.